Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Last week, an unprecedented lawsuit was filed by an international company against the province of Prince Edward Island. A $25 million action against the province, elected officials, and former and current senior staff of the Premier. The lawsuit is about the government's involvement in its failed e-gaming scandal. Over the weekend, I reviewed the details of the lawsuit. The allegations contained in the statement of claim are very, very serious. These allegations raise legal and ethical concerns about actions at the highest levels of the provincial government. The allegations are against the government and six of its most senior officials, many of whom remain on the payroll today. In the days since the lawsuit, in the days since it was filed, we've heard absolutely nothing from the leader of the Liberal Party. Mr. McLaughlin has failed to provide any explanation to Islanders about the serious allegations set out in this claim. Mr. McLaughlin has also failed to provide any response to the letter about this growing crisis that I sent to him on March 4th. In that letter, I requested two things. First, I asked Mr. McLaughlin to release all documents, all documents relating to the e-gaming scandal so that Islanders could make their own determination of the facts. As Premier, Minister of Finance, and Minister responsible for Aboriginal Affairs, these documents are at his fingertips. The second was to allow the Public Accounts Committee to examine what went wrong on this file. This would have been well within the mandate of that committee to pro provide oversight on expenditures. The Auditor General even said that it wouldn't interfere with her work. Neither of those things happened. It was my hope that by being open and transparent, costly legal action could be avoided. Here are the facts as we know them. Almost a million dollars of taxpayers' money was spent on an e-gaming project. No other information about the project, the participants, the costs, or the reasons for its failure has been released. The allegations set out in this lawsuit raise serious ethical questions about the government and six senior government officials. There are unprecedented allegations in the statement of claim that the former Minister of Finance for this, promise, for this province lied on numerous occasions to the media, to the legislature, and to the people of Prince Edward Island about the e-gaming file. Members of the cabinet who oversaw the e-gaming file remain as members of the Premier's cabinet today. These ministers sat around the table and directed this initiative from start to disastrous finish. The Premier has welcomed them to his team, and they're seeking re-election. Island taxpayers will now bear the cost of defending this government, the former Minister of Finance, and the other senior government officials for its fair failure in this e-gaming scandal. On February, February 23rd, 2015, Mr. McLaughlin became the Premier and Minister of Finance for this province. He knew this lawsuit was coming. He has all the information at his fingertips, but instead of being open and accountable to Islanders, he refuses to give us answers. He said he would operate ethically to restore trust and confidence in government. I can tell you it's not there, folks, when I speak to Islanders. Yet Mr. McLaughlin has employed the same duck and delay tactics as Mr. Giz. In this regard, he's failed Islanders. Islanders have questions. Islanders want answers. Islanders deserve answers. He denied the Public Accounts Committee the opportunity to review the matter, instead referring it to the Auditor General. Yet the Auditor General has no authority to judge the ethical and legal conduct of those involved. The Ethics Commissioner cannot investigate this matter because she was involved in the file and is referenced in the lawsuit. Mr. McLaughlin has the ultimate responsibility for the ethical conduct of the government. He's the only one who can lift the veil of secrecy around the e-gaming scandal. He could have done it weeks ago, but instead, he chose to operate the same way as his predecessor and the rest of his cabinet. That's not change. That's more of the same, ladies and gentlemen. He's failed his own promise to be open and transparent. He will not release the information. I will. Again, I ask the Premier, clear the air. 
Islanders have a number of questions that require immediate answers. Why were the securities investigation documents sealed by the government? It's our understanding that the company involved is fully prepared to have the documents made public. Why won't you release the full information to the public before voting day as I asked in a letter on March 4th? A letter which you ignored. Why did you block efforts to refer this to the Public Accounts Committee as a means to inform the public? <clears throat> Particularly when the Auditor General advised in writing that it wouldn't conflict with her limited scope of work in this matter. Are island taxpayers on the hook for West Sheridan's legal fees? Mr. Sheridan received a $70,000 severance when he resigned his seat as an MLA on February 23rd. Are island taxpayers on the hook for Alan Campbell's legal fees? On your first day in office, you confirmed Mr. Campbell's deputy minister status, naming him as your senior policy advisor. And another former chief of staff who departed with a severance, also a defendant in the lawsuit. Are taxpayers on the hook again? We don't know. More than a failed economic development initiative, this matter strikes at the very heart of trust in government. Trust in government is essential. We're going to ask the private sector to invest in this province, providing the kind of well-paid year-round employment that islanders need and want. It rests on the shoulders of Mr. McLaughlin to do what is right, what is fair, and what is necessary. It's past time for him to address this matter and act in the interests of all islanders instead of only a few. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.